We're now going to begin a look at some endpoint security fundamentals, specifically using the Cisco AMP for endpoints solution. Protection on the endpoints themselves is another important piece of our overall security picture, and AMP allows us to track and secure our endpoints in a specific and targeted manner. Let's first talk about the anti-malware features of Cisco AMP. Each endpoint that we have under the control of AMP would have a lightweight AMP connector installed, which is compatible with many operating systems, including Windows, Linux, Mac, Android, and iOS. This allows AMP to continually monitor the file and the process activity on the endpoints for malware. And in fact, inside of AMP, if we go to the management tab at the top and we click on the download connector area, this is going to show us our different connectors that we can install on our endpoints. There are two types of policies that we have by default, which are audit policies and protect policies. Of course, our policies determine the type of protection that we have. We can see our current policies and also edit those by going under the management tab once again, and we can choose the policies option from here. This is going to show us again our current policies and also allow us to edit those. From here, we see the policies that we currently have in place. With audit policies, these will detect malicious files, but those will not be quarantined. We see an audit mode here and an audit policy just underneath that. With protect policies, such as the normal policy we see here, like a domain controller policy, those protect policies you might guess will detect and additionally quarantine malicious files. Also with malicious network connections, we have the same actions. Audit policies will simply monitor those connections while protect policies will block malicious network connections completely. You may be thinking, why would we use an audit policy? Why would we want to simply monitor that without blocking? Well, these are useful for gathering data in order to tune our protection better because they create limited interference with an endpoint. So we would use this during the initial deployment phase when we're trying to make determinations about the best settings for our network, or we might use those during active troubleshooting as well. Protect policies are obviously going to offer the best protection in a production environment once our solution is deployed, or in other words, once we place AMP for endpoints into production. Let's take a look at one of those audit policies that we have in place here at the moment. Let's just choose this audit policy for Fire AMP Linux. And when we click on that, it's going to expand the window a bit. We can see some information about this particular audit policy. We can see the groups over here on the right that this policy applies to. If we look at the bottom, we see an edit button. So let's click that. That is obviously going to allow us to edit our audit policy. We'll scroll down just a bit. And this brings us to our modes and engines tab, where we can choose how AMP will respond to suspicious files or networks. And you can see that for files, we are set to, of course, audit, this being an audit policy, and the network is set to disabled, meaning that we're not examining network activity with this audit policy. If we navigate back to our main policies page, let's choose one of our protect policies. Let's choose this uh, protect policy for FireAmp Mac. Again, you can see the groups that it applies to, among other things. Let's click our edit button here. And for this protect policy, you can see that for files, we are set to quarantine those files. And also for network, we are set to block networks. You might also notice that we have enabled Clam AV as a detection engine. By doing this, we're providing offline protection from malware when the user isn't connected to the internet. And that uses a more traditional definition-based antivirus detection engine that would be updated periodically. This is something we'll examine more in a future video. If we choose the advanced settings from the left-hand side, we see a tab for that. We have lots of options under here, such as scheduling endpoint scans. We see that at the bottom. We can go in and schedule a new scan for our endpoints. We can go under client user interface and we can hide or show certain notifications on the user side of things. 
and we see our clam AV area where we can choose a definition update interval. And we also have many other advanced settings available to us under here. Let's go back again to our main policies window. And one of the policies we see here is a server policy. Let's expand that. And you can see that this is assigned to a group that is set up for servers. There are currently three servers within that group. Let's go down and choose the edit button and take a look at that policy. And it's a best practice to have a server policy in place within Cisco AMP, such as this one. Let's scroll down a bit so that we can see a, a little bit more about our policy under our modes and engines window. Also note that on the right side, we see recommended settings towards the bottom. We see recommended settings for workstations and recommended settings for servers. So that's a very helpful way that we can determine a good starting point for our anti-malware protection and then tune that according to our needs. So that's a look at different policy options for anti-malware protection within Cisco AMP. Many endpoint anti-malware systems will inspect files only at the point in time that they are accessed or executed. This is certainly true with traditional antivirus programs. When we talk about the Cisco AMP features, one of the great things that this includes is both continuous analysis and retrospective security. Malware has continued to become more and more sophisticated using things like sleep features to hide malware and activate that at a point in time later than when we first downloaded it or executed it. Having simple point in time detection isn't enough these days, and that's why Cisco AMP has these next generation features. AMP has the ability to record the activity of all files within the system, and it can determine if a file that was formerly categorized as being benign turns into a malicious threat at a later time. AMP can also give you an historical view into such a file, allowing you to see the origin of the threat and the behavior over a period of time. One of the main places where we can access this information is by going on our main dashboard page here, and you'll see that we have an inbox tab. If we click on that at the moment, you're gonna see that this is empty, but if we had any endpoints under the control of AMP that required attention, those would be listed here. Any types of events or problems that pop up would be reported in our inbox. If we scroll down, you'll see that these can be sorted into require attention, in progress or resolve. We have those three categories here. If you're familiar with ticketing systems used in the IT industry, that's a very similar concept as to what we see here. This is simply a way that we can track progress of any event towards remediation. If we scroll back toward the top, you'll see that we also have an events tab here that we can click on. And from here, we can see another historical view of events in our network. We can select our time range, ranging from the day to 30 days in the past, and any events that show up, you could click that event and it would display the current user and computer name, and you would have the ability to initiate a scan from this area onto that endpoint. So if we set that to 30 days, we will see some different events that pop into our view here. We can click on one of those. Again, we see information about the current user. This one is listed as unknown. Uh, we can see the actual computer name. We see some comments here. We can add our own comments. We see information about the errors. We can choose device trajectory. That will allow us to see the path that this device has taken through our network. So really, really great information that we're able to see here. If we go under the main analysis tab here at the top, we're going to see many more options for reporting on retrospective security that can be helpful during the triage state. One thing you may want to do as an administrator is to configure reports. Let's go and click on that option. And from here, you can configure new custom reports or you can edit an existing report. Once this loads, we can click on configure custom reports if we want to set up a new report or if we want to edit those. We have an edit button here to edit an existing report. Let's click on new custom report. And this is going to, again, create an automated report that will be delivered to us in a weekly, monthly, or quarterly manner based on what we configure here. 
If we go back to our main reports page and close out of that, and if we choose to edit an existing report, you can see that we have the ability to affect these options here as well and to choose which group that applies to. We could save and schedule that if we want to change our schedule. Let's go back to our main reports window. If we go back a page and we can see these reports that have already been created, we can click on one of those and see the table of contents for this report. So you can see that this is very well laid out. We have an overview here with links that will allow us to get a quick glance of any problems on the endpoints. If we click on any of these sections of the table of contents, it's going to jump down to that section of the report. So the big takeaway here is that retrospective security is a built-in feature inside of Cisco AMP where it is continuously monitoring files and processes. The main thing for us as administrators is to analyze the alerts that were being presented within Cisco AMP, both ongoing alerts and retrospective information, and to determine the appropriate remediation steps. We've looked at policy settings previously in regard to anti-malware, and here we want to revisit that to talk specifically about the antivirus capabilities of Cisco AMP. One of the great things about Cisco AMP is that it was designed to work alongside any existing antivirus solutions that you may have deployed on an endpoint. Those can include things like McAfee or Symantec. AMP will not interfere with these solutions, and it will allow those antivirus solutions to perform their own analysis and inspections before it takes action. This means that AMP will not interfere with these solutions and will allow these antivirus systems to perform their own analysis and inspection before AMP takes any actions. This means that if you have an existing AV solution that you already prefer that's in place, the AV can take care of any malware removal on its own. Anything that these AVs might miss can still be detected by AMP, which would take any additional steps deemed appropriate. If you don't have a preferred AV solution that you want to use, then Cisco AMP does provide two offline antivirus engines available for endpoint protection, which are Tetra and Clam AV. Using these offline antivirus engines means that scanning can take place even when a user is not connected to the internet and would therefore be disconnected from the Cisco cloud. This means we can protect against malicious files identified by the AV definitions file without having to send the file to the cloud for analysis. Obviously, this is less thorough, but it is still an important layer to our security. If we go under our management tab that we see at the top, we can go down to AV definition summary at the bottom of our list, and we can see a page for both Tetra and CLAM AV virus definitions, along with a history of those virus definition updates. The Tetra antivirus engine is available for offline scanning of Microsoft Windows-based devices. You can see 64 and 32-bit versions of that. While we use the CLAM AV antivirus for offline scanning of both Linux and Mac OS devices. This type of protection is not enabled by default, but we can enable these in the policies we create as we looked at previously. If we go under the management tab and take a look at our policies area once again, let's choose the info policy that we see here. Expand that just a bit and we'll click on the edit button near the bottom. You can see that that particular policy, by the way, is a Windows policy. We see that indicated in the main policy window with a Windows icon. If we scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that for this particular policy, the Tetra detection engine is enabled. If we go under our advanced settings on the left, you'll see that we have a Tetra section found under there where we can set some specific preferences for this detection engine. We have the option to choose how often the endpoint will check for updated Tetra definitions, and we can also choose to use AMP as the update server if we prefer to do that. On average, Cisco will release 7 to 15 definition updates every day. In fact, if we go back to our management tab at the top, and we go back to our AV definition summary area, let's take a look at some of our previous definitions. So, for example, the previous day here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
nine definition updates over the previous day. So we are constantly getting updated information from Cisco Intelligence in regard to our AV definitions. By the way, anytime we want to add a new endpoint under our management capabilities, if we want to add another endpoint for Tetra or Clam AV protection, we can go to the management tab that we see at the top here. We can choose download connector. And from here, we can download and deploy the proper connector for an endpoint based on its operating system. So that's a look at the available offline antivirus protection features with Cisco AMP.